Singapore decided that in terms of upgrading its legacy wastewater system, um, it would be very costly. Singapore, as you know, is also very land scarce. It's a small island of about 600 square kilometers. So what we decided to do in Singapore was we decided to get rid of all the wastewater treatment plants in the city center mm -hmm. and instead have them centralized in the far corners of the island. Mm -hmm. What we then started doing was we started having these deep tunnels. They go down as low as about 60 meters underground and without any pumping stations or mechanization through gravity flow itself, um, wastewater is transported to the centralized wastewater treatment plants. It is uh, treated and it is treated to a standard higher than what WHO specifies for clean, drinking, portable water, and then it's put back into the national stream for, for, for water usage. And, and, and that's something which is ongoing. We have done the first phase, and phase two is now being, being conceived uh, as we speak. Mm -hmm. and, and I think this Singapore is one of the prime examples in Asia for adopting this technology and a lot of countries are now emulating this. Right. So what was the, the key design challenge uh, in, in sort of putting this whole thing together and how did you overcome that? Right. Well, I think there are a lot of challenges. First of all, of course, uh, there was a challenge of doing this in a quick sp uh, pay, uh, span of time. The second is, of course, Singapore is a very highly urbanized environment, so digging these tunnels, mm. uh, where which is in a congested area, is, is troublesome. Uh, so, you know, of course it requires a lot of engineering and working with contractors to do the site planning to make sure that we can use the site, the limited site that we have to get this done. And of course it requires a lot of technology. So what we call tun tunneling boring machines were, were deployed mm. and this was had to be done under many pa packages, construction packages, because no one contractor could do all of it in one go. Right. So those were some of the things as and an engineer we were. Involved. Right, and, and give us a sense on what's the throughput in uh, that this system actually delivers on a daily basis in terms of water. Right, so th and this basically uh, right now on phase one uh, handles about one third of Singapore's wastewater um, because it's mm. one third of Singapore right now and it's just now being, as I said, being implemented um, in, in phase two. So right now in Singapore, through our drains, uh, all sewage water is actually collected and so, so we obviously have about 3,400 uh, kilometers of sewage network mm -hmm. and about a big chunk of it is this deep tunnel sewage system. Right, so you're saying one third of sewage water is collected and treated and, and that's what I'm assuming comes back into the system. No, well, what I'm saying is w with the deep tunnel sewage system that handles one third of Singapore's sewage okay. uh, water mm. and the rest is handled through conventional means. Okay, yeah. and and so uh, are you saying that all of Singapore's what sewage water then is treated in some way or the other? Absolutely, hundred percent. Okay, and it comes back into the in, into the sort of portable drinking system, what is or true? whatever is Correct. comes up. Right. Absolutely. So, yeah. what's the next phase? What's what are the challenges there, and how are you scaling that up? Right. So in Singapore, I mean, I I think the the other big challenge we've had in Singapore with regards to water is, as you know, with climate change, we have had a lot of. Uh, flooding mm. uh, in Singapore, uh, just like you have in parts of India. Mm. So, so Singapore has come up with some novel ideas as well. One of the ideas or uh, projects which has been completed a few years back is in our city center we've created a, a water reservoir. Mm -hmm. And um, what this water reservoir does is of course it separates uh, this reservoir from the seawater. It's actually on the Marina Bay. So, so it, it, it creates a, a freshwater body which is treated and, and, and used for uh, drinking consumption, but also it is used as a way to control floods at times when there's heavy flooding, especially in the lower lying areas of Singapore. Mm. So it discharges the water into the sea. So that's, that's some of the other challenges. This is one example, uh, but there are a lot of other improvements being done in terms of canal widening, uh, better drainage systems to look after um, you know, times when we have heavy rains. In Singapore, we collect a lot of rain. And, you know, it's often said in Singapore, we have two seasons, a rainy season and a very rainy season. Mm. And we collect on average about 2,400 uh, millimeters of rain every year. So it's quite a wet country. Mm. And so that's one of the other challenges uh, we have with regards to water. So all this water that is collected is also collected to be sent back into the system. You're Correct. Saying, right? Absolutely. So can you give me a sort of overall, a broad picture? So let's say for every 100 liters of water that's uh, that either rains or is brought in from somewhere through yeah. a, 
what's the equation like? I mean, how much created, generated, treated, right. delivered back? Sure. So Singapore has no water of its own. Correct. Um, so, so we are a country that at one time was 100% reliant on our neighbors. Malaysia. So mm -hmm. right now what we have done through all this investment is about a third of our water is through these, um, you know, rainwater harvesting, uh, collection of water. Um, and about 25% roughly is uh, through desalination. Mm -hmm. So that's, that's the other uh, chunk. And of course, wastewater treatment plant, um, that, that water serves uh, for industries because it's treated mm -hmm. at a very high uh, level. Mm -hmm. And of course, also you put back into the water stream. So now, I mean, I wouldn't say we are 100% self-sufficient, mm -hmm. but we are largely uh, self-sufficient uh, already. So I think collectively just these resources, desalination, mm -hmm. um, you know, water catchment areas, collection of rainwater, and, 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 you know, the treatment of wastewater handles about roughly between 70 and 80 percent of our water requirements. Right. So, last question. So, what, what's the kind of future target here then? I mean, you seem to be achieving self-sufficiency, but um, since you talked about climate change and some of the vagaries that that could cause. Sure. So, what's like a, like a future stretch target which you're currently thinking of and may sort of execute at some other point? Right. No, I think um, the, the objective is to me 100 percent self-sufficient and, and we will on course on that. But from from a government perspective, if I may, I think what Singapore is looking at is using the expertise that has been harnessed domestically to convert Singapore into a global hydro hub hmm. and, and, and make Singapore companies uh, using the expertise they have garnered and, and send them to uh, different parts of the world. And of course, India is a big market. Um, Southeast Asia, also water stressed. So Asia is actually a very water stressed region generally. Hmm. And I think um, the expertise we have uh, obtained as engineers in terms of creating smart design solutions, uh, other companies have in terms of technology. So to, to go into countries where we can add value. Middle East is also, of course, one region. So that is, I think, the next uh, objective uh, is to try and export our success story overseas. All the best for that. And thank you so much for speaking with us. Thank you for having me. Thank you.